Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, we're going to talk about artifacts, like all the artifacts in Epic 7. You see, every once in a while, I'll get video suggestions from users down in the comment section, as well as over on my Discord or on my Twitch stream, which is twitch.tv forward slash IM underscore TSU. One of those suggestions comes from Slim Bibby, who asks, will you ever do a five-star, four-star, three-star artifact tier list? And I started to think about it, yeah, I've already done one. I did a five-star artifact tier list with Divine like just a couple months ago. Problem is, that was like two hours long. And me, being who I am, I really like speedrunning content. And I thought, two hours is not enough, man. That's way too long for some people. Let's try and get that down. Let's, let's lower our PB, if you will. So today, we are going to speedrun... <laughs> Talking about every single artifact in Epic 7. And it's not just the five stars. Oh, no, 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 no. We're doing the four stars and the three stars as well, right? So we're going to talk about all of them. Before I actually get into it, though, uh, let's talk about the tiers. The best self-explanatory. The best ones in the game. Widely used. Has four or more use cases. Like, pretty much as many of these as you can get, you're going to want to keep. Two to three uses. Pretty self-explanatory. One use. Only really one niche use. And then at the bottom, it's just the stuff that, like, nobody actually cares. The stuff that's in here, I'm probably not going to actually talk too much about in order to keep the video length a little bit shorter. Because let's be real here. Like, most of this stuff is not really playable. I might have a couple of things to say on some of them. But, yeah, that gives you the general gist of how this works. Take a sip of water. And then uh, away we go. All right. So, timer started. So let's start with a symbol of unity gives hit chance and damage percentage to very valuable things. Pretty much uh, just great for not only if you need damage for all forms of content, it's basically an unconditional portrait of the saviors, not as strong, but comparable damage numbers. And again, that hit chance is really, really important in order to hit certain uh, actual characters like say savior audit in PVP. Most people, if they had more than one copy of this, they would use it. Small gate, please. Bastion of Hope is another amazing guild artifact that everyone has access to. It gives a bunch of effect resistance to the user. Uh, just really great for certain characters like Silver Tide Christie, Sage Ball and Cezanne, Arya. There's a lot of characters that can use this. It really shores up a stat that you need a whole heaping ton of in order to make uh, actually work for a lot of PvP content. Benny Mars Tachi gives the attack buff to a warrior, which is the best offensive buff pretty much in the entire game. It's the most valuable one. Yes, greater attack buff is better, but that's a lot rare. For most cases, attack buff is going to end up being the best things. Uh, Benny Maro, Straze, Luna, the list goes on. Like, if you're an attack scaling warrior that's meant to deal damage, Tachi is probably going to be your best in slot option. Bloodstone is the backbone of most PvE content that uses a Ranger because it's another force, uh, source, I should say, of healing, especially in Abyss, right? There's a lot of Abyss challenge floors, even things like Expeditions require bloodstone in order to actually go off without a hitch cruel mischief is pretty much just staple for hollow trials if you want to do hollow trials you need cruel mischief you want to get those dagger sakar requests done you need cruel mischief like every dps that you're going to be playing in hollow trials it's going to want to use cruel mischief right elbrus ritual sword pretty much the staple turn to dps knight artifact great right? on navy captain landy abyssal euphine bellion green armin Charles, Ilanav, uh, even like Mort, right? Like the list goes on. Like you can never have enough Elbrus Ritual Swords. It's just one of the best DPS artifacts in the whole game. Golden Rose gives sustain and DPS to non-attack scaling heroes, such as like Lionheart Sermia or Designer Lilibet. There's not that many users for it right now, but as more and more of them keep coming out, this is just going to keep gaining and gaining value alongside of its sister artifact, which is Sigurd Scythe which is why I decided to put it here, even though, again, it only has like two or three users right now. In the future, it's going to obviously scale way up. Guardian Ice Crystals is just a rock-solid artifact. It gives effect resistance, and it gives a pseudo-Waters Origin style uh, passive to not only the Soul Weaver wearing it, but everyone else on your team, which is something Waters Origin doesn't actually have. So the trade-off is essentially Waters Origin gives you CR on the user and only protects the user. Guardian Ice Crystals protects the team and gives ER. It's just... Probably the most generically good Soul Weaver artifact in the game. Guiding Light props up the entire Ranger class for PvP. Pretty much no Rangers are really viable without Guiding Light. There's just, you know, a handful of them that might work on other artifacts. So give like Bihu or like Pirate Captain Flan, 
see side of Saria, right? Like these things, there's definitely others out there, but the vast majority of the Ranger class is playing Guiding Light. It's what lets that class function at the highest level of the game. I currently have six or seven Guiding Lights. I know other uh, content creators have like eight to 10. It's just one of those things where you could just never have enough of this thing. Proof of Valor is pretty much just the best damage mitigation artifact in the game. You put it on certain bruiser hard characters, like uh, hard carries, or just say like Urban Shattered Shoe, Apocalypse Shoddy. It's great on supports as well that you want to keep alive, like say Conqueror or Lilius. It's just really, really good. If you want a character to not die, Proof of Valor is the option. Thankfully, it's free and you get two of them. Rocket Punch is just an extremely broken artifact, which is why I have it here in the best. It pretty much makes Shadow Knight Hillis an actual character for PvP. And it's the reason why Karina is the highest win rate character in PvP as of the recording of this video. Like, it's only got, like, two real users, but, like, there's probably more. Fighter Maya probably works absolutely insane at this. Uh, it's just a really, really busted artifact. And honestly, I'm kind of sad that it might never get a rerun. Smoggy definitely needs to figure this one out. Sigurd Sight, the accompanying one to Golden Rose, gives damage and sustain to a lot of attack scaling warriors like Martial Artist Ken, Lone Crest and Bologna, and in the past characters like Rem, Red Robbie, right? Like this thing is really, really important for a lot of warriors uh, in order to do their job. Soul Constellation gives a bunch of ER and CR pushing, is pretty much a staple in the current format for having a Soul Weaver that can react to certain fast openers to steal the turn to interrupt a potential aggro setup or a cleave setup, right? That's why it's super important. You want to have at least a couple uh, Soul Weavers if you can on Soul Constellation in your roster. If you don't have multiple Soul Constellations, then the fallback is going to be Eternus, which we'll talk about in the four-star artifact. Song of Stars is the backbone of a lot of PvE content that is very, very difficult in this game. Um, a lot of boss fights, uh, very good in certain hunt compositions, especially one-shots. Like, there's a lot that you can use Song of Stars on. It's very, very good for PvE. And then Warhorn is just another really strong guild artifact. It gives uh, attack percentage to your whole team, and then it pushes up the character wearing it very, very quickly. Really good in certain uh, PvE strategies, most famously used in PvP on Mediator Quirk, but also has had success with other characters. I've seen Conqueror Lilius played with it. I've seen Spectre Tenebria played with it as well. Shoutouts to Kukurbat. All right. Now, moving on to widely used. Again, water, because we're talking a lot in this video. Uh, Abyssal Crown, right? Used to be one of the best in the game. Very, very good for a lot of Abyss strategies. Good also for control characters like Solitaria and Sage Ball and Cezanne. Celestine, staple way to give a Soul Weaver healing. It's basically more proactive than Guardian Ice Crystals. Great on characters like Inos 2.0. Dragon King Sharoon, regular Sharoon, if you want to use her for like certain other uh, compositions like Counter, for example, right? Counter PvP uh, Sharoon, it works for. Yeah, it just if you need proactive healing on a character that doesn't really have it, Celestine is a great option. Draco Plate, it gives damage mitigation and damage. So like if your proofs are already in use on Warriors, Draco Plate ends up just being the default next best option. It's not like the best in slot for a lot of characters, but it's great on a huge majority of the damage dealing warrior roster. So that's why it lands here. Fairy Tale for a Nightmare is great on a lot of mages that have uh, counter attacks, extra attacks, dual attacks, Solitaria, uh, Archdemon Shadow, uh, Aria, just to name a few. So that's why it's here. Mature Sunglasses is the knight version of Draco Plate. If you need mitigation and damage and don't have extra Elvis Ritual Swords, it is a fairly solid option. Merciless Glutton is an amazing offensive artifact for single target warriors. Not as good as Benny Mars Tachi, but it does give you a CR push if you secure a kill. So making it really, really good for certain characters. Luna, uh, Rimuru. I've seen Zahak used on this, right? Like there's definitely a number of warriors that can take advantage of this. It's one of the better offensive artifacts for a warrior in the game. Prayer of Solitude, great for HP scaling warriors like Lethe, Shu. Apocalypse Ravi, almost any HP scaling bruiser can really take advantage of this thing because it just gives you a huge amount of HP and also it gives you extra damage. Route of Amaryllis, another proactive healing for characters that don't have it, most notably like DN, but it could also be used on like Montmorency. A lot of PvE usage, right? Like this is like the best artifact to help sustain your team for PvE. Secret Art Storm Sword, great on Selene uh, and any other kind of characters that you want to be techie with to try to interrupt certain compositions. Like you can use it on Spirit Isoline. I've seen people use it on like 
green Sid, for example, just like anything that lets you cut in front of somebody, get that attack buff and kind of steal the game from people. It's really, really important for allowing you to be uh, reactive to certain compositions, much in the same way as Soul Constellation, but it's not as universally useful. Shepherd of the Hollow, I think, is just the most generically useful uh, thief artifact that gives damage as well as dodge, right? That's why it lands here. Shamadra's Staff gives not only ER, but increased healing, making it great for certain ER compositions and characters. Like, it's pretty good with, like, Destina, although I'd probably go Guardian Ice Crystals. Obviously, one of the best, if not the best, for Maid Chloe. Really, really good stuff for a lot of Soul Weavers in PvE as well. Unfading Memories gives, again, it's another option for you to give healing to characters that normally don't have great amounts of healing. It also gives a metric ton of effect resistance. Great on characters like, say, Infinite Horizon Achates. Good on uh, Shuna, for example. Decent on DN, not exactly the best, but there's definitely some use cases for this thing. Not as good, I think, as some of the other Soul Weaver artifacts we've talked about, but it's still really, really good. And then Wind Rider is just like the best DPS aggressive single target um, uh, thief artifact. Great on Kisei, the Sids, for example. A lot of people can actually use this. Some would probably argue that this should be in the best, but I just don't think it's as universally useful as the ones that are up here, right? But like this one is like borderline between widely used and the best. All right, two to three uses, right? Let's move on to this tier. A Little Queen's Huge Crown is good on Hua Yong and good on Arunka for PvP. Misha is good for giving hit chance for certain uh, actual um, rangers. Elagos, for example, after his EE. Uh, it can be used on like Briar Witch, things like that. Alensinox's Wrath is used for not only Alencia, but also Kane for Rift. Ancient Dragon's Legacy is good on DPS Mort as well as DPS versions of Lilius, especially if you're trying to counter Lua. Azure Comet is used on some aggressive warriors in order to have better turn cycling. It's been used famously in the past on things like Designer Lilibet. I've seen it used on Straze, right? A number of uh, warriors that need the crit chance, but also could, you know, don't really have like an amazing option in the slot. It's a pretty solid thing that you can use in order to kind of be cheeky and cut in front of somebody. Bastion of Prelucia is used on certain tanks in order to give immunity and a barrier for protection in order to set up certain kinds of PvP compositions. Black Hand of the Goddess is used by a lot of mages that are trying to deal DPS and don't want to have like full crit chance, crit damage. Like it's just another way for you to get damage if you're not looking to really play book. Champion's Trophy is a solid option for characters like C. Lilius and Assassin Kartua. Chatty is a great way to protect lifesteal uh, mages like Roy Mustang or like Sylvan Sage Vivian, for example. Crown of Glory is great on knights if you want to have them be tech options that are only really good versus like AoE compositions like Last Rider Crowd can make use of it. I use it on a character like Mort in tandem with another tank because Mort doesn't really have like too many great options. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to jam him on Crown of Glory and play him with like an Arius holder like Last Rider Crowd. And I'm going to really hose people for not... Uh, for playing AoE. Dignosorb is really good for not only top model Lulica, but Vivian for a lot of PvE content. Doctor's Bag is great for characters like Elena and Moonbunny Dominio. Double Edge to Crescent, pretty good for characters like Kairon. I've seen people use it on characters like Remnant Violet as well for PvP. Durandal, great on Dark Corvus, great on Assassin Kartua. Any like slow warrior or like warrior that if it gets hit, it's really bad for your opponent in general. Durandal's a pretty good pickup. Or the Giant Candle is essentially Misconfile, uh, but it's got less of a chance to defense break, but it can work on non-single target attacks, so that's why it's here. It's pretty much just another copy of Misconfile. Great for a lot of PvE content. Could also be used for some things in PvP if you're feeling pretty daring. I know that people have used it for like Faithless Lydica Cleaves. You can use it, so it's definitely a thing. Eticus Scepter, pretty good for like Abyss, pretty good for Nightmare Raid, right? A lot of PvE content really wants to take advantage of Etika Scepter. It's too risky to play in PvP, but it definitely helps with uh, cooldowns and things like that in PvE. Holy Sacrifice, uh, really good for like Guild War offense, defense. Great on characters like Abyssal, right? Great on characters like Yulha or Crowd to kind of have like a surprise gotcha. Needs a lot of investment though. You really need this thing at like plus 27, ideally plus 30. Hostess of the Banquet gives uh, damage and ER for Thieves. We have obviously Gala can make use of this. But I've seen people use it on like Twisted Idol on k -Ron. I've seen people use it on Specimen Says. Uh, and then obviously Elvira can use it as well to make her initial burst damage quite a bit higher. Idol's Cheer, great in a lot of PvE scenarios. Also for specific trap setups for uh, Arena, maybe Guild Wars, things like that. 
Not my favorite Soul Weaver artifact, but definitely sees a lot of use. Jacko symbol, good on Jacko, obviously, for PvP cleave, although I think there are better options. But it does give bonus damage when somebody has a debuff and does give effectiveness. So it does allow you to kind of cheat on certain PvE scenarios where you would need effectiveness. Like if you need 65, you can get it with like 55 because of this artifact, right? Uh, it's also really, really good on Terran or Guard because Terran or Guard in PvE is primarily played on the Rage set, which has great synergy with Jacko's symbol. So it's kind of like A plus on that character. This con file gives defense break for certain PvE content that you might need it for. Most famously used on like Cerise, for example. That's a great spot for it. Noble Oath, great on Anti-Cleave Karina. Great on characters like Fighter Maya in the past. Even like Shadow Knight can kind of make use of it. Any defense scaler that actually has, you know, good ratios can take advantage of this thing. It makes you just absurdly tanky. Again, I've used Noble Oath Fighter Maya for not only Guild War, but in Advent uh, in the past as well. RNL, pretty much only for multi-hit spamming thieves. Most famously used on Ran, but like Crescent Moon Rin can take advantage of it. Some of the Karins can take advantage of it, right? Um... It just, it depends. It's a very high risk, high reward artifact. Rise of the Monarch, really, really good in a lot of PvE content on Knights. I use it on my Cecilia and my Raz for a lot of Abyss and Expedition stuff. So that's why it's here. Sacred Tree Branch, got a buff recently. Pretty good on things like Dragon King Sharoon uh, and also Ocean Breeze Lulica. Samsara Prayer Beads is very similar to Draco Plate, right? It gives uh, essentially damage reduction and also damage itself. You could argue that it's probably all in the same tier as Draco Plate. Like Draco Plate's kind of like maybe a slightly like a tier lower. This might be slightly a tier higher. Uh, it's personal preference, right? Samsara Prairies gives less damage, uh, but like if you're a character like Dark Corvus, it's going to end up being a little bit better for you. Snow Crystal, decent on Shu, decent on characters like Holiday Ufine for cutting, right? In front of things, interrupting certain aggro or cleave style strategies. Spear of a New Dawn has only two users. It's just basically Red Charlotte, which it's not exactly the best in slot option, but its primary use is Senya. Very, very powerful artifact. It's what makes that character so good. Spirit's Breath, really good for cheesing certain PvE content with things like Auxiliary Lots, if you have it actually maxed out. Really, really annoying to play against if it's on Angel of Light, Angelica, and PvP. Star of the Deep Sea, Summertime Misseria, and Pirate Captain Flan, pretty much staple artifact for these characters. Sword of Azera, really, really important for certain tanks for PvE content because it gives the most amount of damage mitigation. So if you don't care about damage share and you just need your tank to survive because you know that the character is going to always focus the front line, like, say, Expeditions, Sword of Azera is an amazing option. Sword of Summer Twilight, great on Vildred, great on Arbiter Vildred, great on Ran also if you actually have that real Ran with real damage. Time Matter, great on DPS Zeo and a staple artifact for Vivian for a number of Hunt Clear teamed compositions. All right. One use here, right? Moving on to this one. Alabastron, right? Good only really on Winter in the current meta. Alexis Basket, only really good on Tempest Cern. Beguiling Wings, Elvira if you have no other option. Bloody Rose, only on Zeo. Border Coin, only on Sea Lilius. Broken Will of the Priest, only for Knights that are DPS against Dodge Units. Circus Fantasia, I know it says one use. It's basically just Conqueror Lilius. People are good Judge Kise. That's not a real character. Moving on. Crimson Moon of Nightmares, only Unity set Spectre Tenebria. You could argue Red Tenebria. It's not as good as Abyssal Crown. Do Noctis, Commander Pavel, XF Detective Gadget, only Elena, Fan of Light and Dark, only Ahmed, Flawless Garments, only Death Dealer Ray, and even then, I'm not so sure about that. Full Metal Automel, only Alencia, Goblet of Oath, only Para, Guide to a Decision, only Holiday Euphine, Ignition Cloth Gloves is only Mages that need Hit Chance, Indestructible Gators, I think, is only good on Inferno Kawazu, Junkyard Dog, only really good for certain PvE content, like that needs debuff quantity, for example, Wyvern 13. Manica, only if you need hit chance. Gardening Shears, only for Biblis. Otherworldly Machinery, only for Wyvern one shot SSB. Rhymeguard Special Drink, only for SSB. Scroll of Shadows, only for Arya. Seal of Capture, only for Bihu. Seductive Flower, only Blooming Lydica. Spatial Temporal Fan, only for 300 plus speed Lua. Spear of Purification is kind of gimmicky. I've seen people use it on Reamer, so sure, throw it in here. Stella Harpa, only Rowana. Sword of Autumn Eclipse, only Zahak for the accuracy for most of the time. Sword of Judgment is like only really Shuri uh, or certain characters in Hall of Trials. It's very, very niche, right? Sword of Winter Shadow, people use it on fast characters like Ran, for example, to kind of hose people. And it's only really as a gimmick, so it doesn't really warrant a two to three use category. Torn Sleeve, only certain characters in Wyvern just for that one specific use to get more bleed stacks. Touch of Rekos, 
It, sometimes you'll throw it on things for PvE. Uh, Tyrant's Descent, it's basically Kaladra, which I have already in kind of a similar tier in the four-star artifact tier, so it just didn't feel right to put it in. I don't know why you'd use it. Uh, it's a solid artifact. It just doesn't belong in two to three uses, right? It's like Kane right now, and that's kind of it, and he has better options. Uberius Tooth, only Hua Young. Unseen Observer, really only Flan. You could argue there's other ones, but it's really only Flan, let's be honest. Upgraded Dragon Knuckles, only Counter Set Milam. Victorious Flag, only in specific expeditions. It's like Luna for like Brutal Ferris, right? Uh, and like there's like one other one. Like you could potentially use it on like Helga or another DPS, like Sid, for example, in uh, Blooming, uh, not Blooming Snag Witch. It's a uh, Hopeless Samaquist, right? Wall of Order. Really only played on Operator Cigarette, although I'd argue Counter Set Landy is really good with this as well. Wings of Light and Shadow, only Brig for PvE content. The rest of this, not super great, right? Whew! Five stars down, right? Sip of water, move right onto the four stars. Okay. Best artifacts in the game is this tier, right? I don't think I have to explain this. Arius defines the turn two playstyle. It is what makes knights do their job. It is the best mitigation artifact in the entire game. Most knights that are tanks are playing Arius, right? Not everyone. Obviously, like uh, Unbound Knight Arwell is an exception, but if you want to tank, it's Arius. No questions asked. Tehagel's Ancient Book is the best artifact in the entire game and absolutely 100% should get some kind of nerf or adjustment, but because the entire game has been balanced around it for five years, that's a really difficult problem to solve. Because I don't want to inadvertently kill all aggro and cleave players. That's a video for another time. But yeah, this is the single best artifact in the entire game. Broadly usable, right? Makes sense. Adamant Shield, you're pretty much playing this if you are playing a second tank alongside of an Arius user. Or your character is somebody like, say, Eaton or Unbound Knight Arwell that already has built-in Arius. Eternus is Soul Consolation for people who don't have Soul Consolation, right? It is a disruptive Soul Weaver artifact that allows you to try to take turn two to kind of stop your opponent from just executing their game plan right away. Magaraha's Tome is great for a lot of PvE content for turn cycling. Characters like Lots in uh, Ancient Inheritance, Montmorency famously in Abyss and Raid. Moonlight Dreamblade, basically like the floor for dodge-based artifacts, right? Like obviously Shepherd of the Hollow has a better ceiling, but... Moonlight Dreamblade is just good old reliable for thieves that have dodge in the kit and are just looking to get some extra damage. Nostalgic Music Box has some PvE applications, but it's most famously used on really fast characters like Conqueror Lilius and PvP to get an advantage. Our Beautiful Seasons just gives bonus damage for PvE content. Really good for things like Rift. Really good for things like Ancient Inheritance. Portrait of the Saviors, just pretty much the floor, the baseline uh, artifact for just increasing damage for any content in the entire game. Prelude to a New Era is Portrait of the Saviors with a different name. Water's Origin is basically the fallback, old, reliable Soul Weaver option. Water's Origin is viable on most Soul Weavers in most scenarios in the game, unless you just need more proactive healing. If you need reactive healing, this is pretty much the artifact to go for. And then Wondrous Potion Bob gives you, obviously, some extra help cleansing your teammates, most notably used by Death Dealer Ray in PvP, but has a lot of PvE applications as well, especially in things like Abyss or like Nightmare Raid, right? <clears throat> Moving on to two to three uses, Card of Small Miracles is your way to eke out damage for things like Hall of Trials and specific hunt compositions. Dust Devil is used on certain reactive thieves like Kron or like Spirit Eye Selene, for example. Elia's Knife is used in PvE scenarios to eke out extra damage on characters like Biken or Green Sid. Hellcutter used on Little Queen Charlotte for the purposes of PvP. For PvE, it's most notably used on things like Straze for hunt one-shot compositions. Heli Lance is used to kind of cheese certain things uh, and then like build these really wonky compositions like Heli Lance on Bound Knight Arwell in PvP is a very real thing. Heli Lance on like Red Lilius is also a thing, right? It's not as good as some of the other Knight artifacts, but it definitely allows for some like really interesting things. Again, especially like Red Lilius if you need to like cut in front of somebody proactively to get a cleanse. Yellow Violin just gives you the ability to dispel. Amazing with AoE mages, right? Oh, pretty good on certain other characters like Champions Rider that need to land debuff. So this makes it so your opponent can actually have immunity. Kaladra is just like all reliable. I need damage on my mage. And surprisingly, mages just don't have great damage dealing artifacts besides generic ones like Portrait. So this is just a decent option for things, especially for like Expedition, for example. Uh, even Hunts, if uh, you're pairing it with a character that's on the rage set. 
Midnight Bloom gives a ton of crit chance to your team. Make certain PvE compositions for a lot of content possible that otherwise wouldn't be unless you had really cracked out gear. Radiant Forever gives bonus damage for things like Expedition and allows certain hunt one-shot compositions to be possible. Rosa Hargana just gives a bunch of dual attack chance, allows you to kind of cheese certain PvE content. Uh, Sasha Athanes, obviously old reliable ranger artifact that's not Guiding Light for cleave-based compositions. Sepulchrum, budget proof of valor, great on... Uh, things like uh, General Purgus, right, for not only things like Wyvern, but also even in PvP. Strat Gauntlet is like a budget version of uh, Bastion of Hope, just gives ER to characters that need it. Most famously, like Dark Corvus can use this, but there are definitely others out there. Super Duper Water Gun Shooter is a different version of Card of Small Miracles with the same name. One use, maybe, right? A Song for Everybody gives dual attack chance, so it's good for like Taranor Guard if you're really trying to high roll with him. Andre's crossbow is something that gives hit chance now after it's buffed. So if you're desperate for hit chance, you on a ranger based DPS, go for it. Else fist. Some people have some Mimi builds, but I've never really seen them have any success. Uh, Infinity basket is like the opposite of Rosa Hargana. Some people play it. I don't really think it's that good. Shepherds of chaos gives dodge and defense. So it's good for things like BBK. I've also seen people use it on like K Ron, for example, silver rain really only on like ran. There's some people out there, I know like Sputnik who watches my channel, plays it on like Judith for fun, but I don't really think Judith's like a viable character. So, uh, Sierra Ren only used in like Abyss or certain other PvE content where you need a high density of debuffs. Like it just helps you get more debuffs on characters. Guardian Star's Blessing is a way for you to get cheap healing in certain Dagger Sakaar or other challenging content that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. The Lovers is basically bootleg protection set if you don't have protection set which allows you to kind of like get around things like Lua and Guild Wars, for example, is really, really niche, right? And then Temperance gives a barrier of two characters at the end of turns. Uh, it's famously was used on Mediator Kuwerik back in the day as kind of like an interesting tech choice. I don't really think it's super good in 2024, but I decided I'd include it. Everything in D, in my opinion, is pretty much unplayable. So now to wrap up the video, let's move on to the three stars. There's not too much to actually talk about. First tier is Borderline Broken. Daydream Joker is the best PvE artifact in the game. It gives so much damage. If the boss is able to be affected by things that can do max health percentage damage, Daydream Joker by far out damages every other artifact in the entire game. Prophetic Candlestick is something that allows a lot of cheese-based compositions with things like, say, Shooting Star Cades, Simple Angelica, Elvira, which obviously ended up getting needing a nerf. And it's most commonly used on Doris for Guild Wars. So yeah, anybody that can really take advantage of Prophetic Candlestick, uh, they're, they're doing some pretty broken stuff with it usually, right? A uh, budget version of good artifacts. Exorcist Tomfa is just Portrait of the Saviors, but bad. So if you miss Guilty Gear, this is your budget option. One use maybe. Curse Compass is just gives a one-time burst of effectiveness, making it good for certain openers, like say like a Fairy Tale Tenebria. Like if you just need to land your opening debuff to win the game, Curse Compass is like an okay option, right? Oath Key gives hit chance. Uh, and if you're a new player and you don't have a lot of the five stars that give hit chance, Oath Key is kind of your best bet, right? Renan's Memorandum, only really used on Kitty Clarissa and like Abyss and Expedition. Like she's the only user for this thing. Uh, it just gives speed every time they take a turn. And considering that she is in comps that are trying to take as many turns as possible, and she's commonly built on very high speed, for the comps that she's in, she's going to go zoom, zoom and be like crazy fast 300 plus speed on this thing. So that's kind of why. Uh, and then I've seen people meme with it. Uh, Butterfly Mandolin is if you get hit, there's a chance that you just have, you take a turn, you get 100 CR, just take a turn. It just happens, right? Uh, sure. I'm never playing it, but could happen. Uh, and then Grail of Blood is another like emergency source of like, hey, I need healing. And I'm like fighting a Dire Sakara quest that doesn't let me use Soul Weavers or any other healers. So like, yeah, Grail of Blood, it's, a, it's another way to heal. Uh, and then, yeah, the final tier list here is just, no, like all these are bad. Like they're just terrible. Like e even I, I don't even keep any copies of these because I just, I have so little faith that these will ever actually get buffed. <sighs> okay, so how do we clock in? 27, 38.2. Okay, Whew, much shorter than two hours. So there you go. That is me quickly going through every artifact in the game. If you still have any questions about what artifacts are good, where they're used, as always, you can let me know down in the comment section of this video or hit me up on Discord or again, 
my Twitch channel. I am always willing to help out new players. Hopefully this was super, super helpful for some of you out there to kind of understand what artifacts are used where. And also it might be kind of beneficial to you because as I'm recording this video, the custom group summon is out right now. And yes, obviously a lot of people watch my tier list for that, but artifacts are a big part of that. So there might be some use cases that you might not have been aware of, right? All right, whew, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go eat lunch now. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.